We're living in a political era that has many people feeling despair, raising questions that are deeper than politics, like, is our society going backwards? If civil society is broken, are we better off just focusing on our own happiness? Or the big one, what's the point of life? Many turn to the arts for insights. From The Handmaiden's Tale to Black Mirror, the arts can offer salvation and deeper thought. And celebrated novelist Alice Walker is weighing in on the Trump era in her art. She says history shows you cannot regret misfortune because it actually can lead us somewhere better. Walker joins me on the beat tonight. Viewers may recognize her name from over 35 books of fiction and poetry or her Pulitzer Prize for the novel The Color Purple, which was adapted into a Steven Spielberg movie that features the film debuts of two black women, Whoopi Goldberg and Oprah Winfrey, in a tale confronting the ravages of slavery and sexual abuse. All my life I had to fight. I had to fight my daddy. I had to fight my uncles. I had to fight my brothers. Girl, child ain't safe in a family means. But I ain't never thought I had to fight in my own house. Walker is now confronting the Trump era head on. She writes, Americans distraught at Trumpism should channel anger into a wider awakening. And her new book of poetry grapples with race, police brutality, and the immigration crisis. Uh, Alice Walker, an honor to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. What are you saying with your poems, and do you think of them as a message about democracy and politics? I think of them as a way to talk to people about tending to their own hurt and their own wounds uh, instead of just screaming at the person who hurt you. Because there's a way in which if we don't heal ourselves, we can never heal the world. And that is the, the, the locus, the, the central point of this book. That seems to be a distinction between how do you have catharsis or progress uh, versus the search for justice or what can be getting even. Uh, because we're also having a conversation here about what people get away with right now in America. Yes, and also um, part of what we what happens if you try to get away with something that's terrible is that you cannot. And in this poem about the police, what I'm saying is that the, the, the white cops who kill our children, they can only expect to be healed by sitting with the mothers uh, of the children they have killed. And this could be a beginning of their healing and the healing of our society. That poem in the new book here, uh, To the Police, I know uh, we have it right there if you'd read it to us. Okay, and this is about the people who own the police. This is not directly to the police because there are people who actually own them. And often they're not aware that they're owned by mm -hmm. something more than themselves. Though usually devoid of feeling, they are experiencing a sensation they almost enjoy. They get to witness, by twisted enchantment, dozens of strong black mothers weeping. They planned and nurtured your hatred and fear, speaking of the police, and focused the kill shot. Hmm. Who do you hope uh, reads that? Well, I hope whoever's interested in freeing their own heart and spirit. You know, I'm not interested in writing actually political things exactly, mm -hmm. but I want to change people the way they interact with each other and the way they see reality and the way they see our history. You have a Pulitzer Prize. Mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar is a young musician, the first rapper to win a Pulitzer Prize ever uh, this past year. And I want to play for you uh, something from one of his songs in a video um, that echoes your work. Take a look. All's my life I has to fight All's my life I Hard times like ya yeah. Bad trips like ya yeah. have, you, have you heard him quote you before? No You've never seen that? <laughs> no And he's big, he's not Alice Walker big, but he's big Well I'm happy for him what, what do you think about the way he's using your work, All's My Life I Had to Fight? Well, I think he's understanding that that is the truth of it, especially for poor people and for people of color in this country. We've had to fight all of our lives. And it's a good thing that we can talk to each other across generations. Prizes are a funny thing. I, I don't imagine you focus on them, but there are people who criticize the Nobel or the Pulitzer for handing them out to musicians. Uh, do you think it should only go to traditional novelists and poets or musicians as well? 
Uh, I, I'm not crazy about prizes, yeah. you know, so whoever wants them should have them, and people who can do without them should do without them. When we talk about the color purple, to think that there was two talented people who happened to be black women, Oprah and Whoopi, who'd never been cast in a film before they adapted your film, does that part of it matter to you? That did. Uh, that was very good, and I was very happy about that. But I'm just saying that the real joy comes from doing the work. It mm -hmm. doesn't really come from the prize. That's something I think that's inspiring about you, uh, and it comes through very much sitting across the table from you. Uh, it, it is obvious to observe, but I will observe it, that that's something that you and the president do not have in common. Um, he, he tends to brag a lot. Mm. Um, but he does claim to be smart and educated. This is the only quoting of the president we're going to do, but I'll play you one clip of President Trump. I went to an Ivy League school. I'm very highly educated. I know words. I have the best words. What does it tell you that it's important to him to be perceived as, as so smart? Um, it tells me that he knows he probably is not, and he has an inferiority complex, and that's very sad. Uh, but it's even sadder that we elected him to lead. We definitely need a very different kind of leader, and in fact, we actually need to lead ourselves. Mm. And until we do, we probably won't get very far. You say inferiority. I mean, does, it, does a feeling of inferiority or a lack of self-affirmation or love, does that, in your view, make people more, more dangerous when they come in contact with power or money? Yes, because there's, lot, there's always envy. I mean, there's always the feeling of need to measure up, you know. And I mean, you can see that between him and, and Barack Obama. I think the envy there was just so blatant. That, that Donald Trump envied, envied Barack Obama, envied his, even though he started out with much more than Barack Obama. Oh, of course. That's part of the problem, that he had everything. And Barack, as a black man, was supposed to have nothing and said, look, what happened? He's, you know, all of the things that this president isn't. And it's very hard to take. But the, the answer is not to make us all suffer, it's to go and improve yourself. Uh, Alice Walker, for me, it's an honor to have you here, so I really appreciate you coming by. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. The book is Taking the Arrow Out of the Heart. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.